In today's video, I'm going to show you how the DV Builder works versus how the Elementor Builder works. If you're new here, my name is Mac. My goal is to teach you how to design professional looking websites with the most popular page builders. All right, let's get started. So over here, we have Elementor. So this is the starting point. And when you take a look here, this is the DV starting point. So at first glance, you can see here that there isn't much really happening here on the DV side of things. Whereas here with Elementor, you have this plus button here and you also have all these other items here on the left and also on the top. Okay. Now, of course, over here in the DV Builder, we also have all these settings here on the bottom. So these are mainly where they are, but you can drag and drop them and place them wherever you want. For example, if you want it on the side like that, you can just drag and drop it there. But I prefer having things right here on the bottom. Whereas in Elemental, we don't have the option to move things around. But let's take a look and see how we get started. So if you want to add your container, you just click here on this plus button and this now gives us your structure. So you can choose whichever direction you want your content to go. So this is using Flexbox out of the box because I went in and I did that quick setting. Whereas with Divi, it doesn't have Flexbox installed on the front end editor. Okay, so if you click here on this plus button, this gives us your container. And you notice that every time we select something, the settings come up over here on the left. Now let's do that one more time. Let's say I want to add something in here. If I click here on this plus button, you notice now that this is giving me an option to add all my widgets, which are all aligned over here to the left. So the way things are here is they are basic ones and pro ones, as you can see here. And there's quite a lot of them, okay? Now let's take a look and see how David does it. So over here, if you click on this plus button, you get your column structure. So this is where you decide whether you want to have two equal columns, so you can just select that. And now this gives you an option to start adding all your modules. So let's say we need to add a text module. So I'll do that and select it. And now, and only now is when you get all your settings for this particular item. So let's say I want to go in and make some changes to this. I would come over here to the design tab and then I'll go into text. So this is where I can choose the color. I can choose the font itself over here. I can also choose the caps. I can choose the sizing and then over here on the sizing as well, I can just uh, decide what I want it to be. Let's say I want it to be 2M. I just type it in here and there we go. We have 2M. Now, once I've done all the edits, I'll have to go ahead and save. Now, let's see how Elementor does it. So over here to add an element, you either click here on this plus button or you click this plus button here to add your element. And then the next step is just to just drag and drop it just like that. So now that's it's in there. All the settings that I need are all in here. So if I click here on style, I can do the similar thing. I can come over here to typography and then I can choose my font over here in this drop down. So I can choose whatever font I want. So let's say I'm going to go with this one here. Next, I can select my size. So again, I can just select EM. Now notice that over here now I can choose my specific uh, way of setting up my sizes. So let's say I go with EM. I can set this to 2EM. And now you can see that that has been added on easily. Next, I if I need to uh, add more settings, I can come over here to the Advanced tab. And we have way more features over here like the Motion Effects, tr uh, Transform. I can add a background and so on. And this also applies here. If I click here on this gear icon, it takes me to all the settings. And then I can come over here to the Advanced. And this is where I can see all my features. So pretty much is... It's almost the same, but I want you to notice something very, very closely here. Every time I need to work into something here in Divi, I will need to go in and activate it like that. And then it goes in here. Once I finish making all my changes, I hit save and then I'm back here. Next, I'll have to come over here, add another module. Now notice how Elementor works. If I need to work on the text, I just click here on this pencil icon and I, I can start working on it. Okay. I don't have to click now to save when I work with Elemental. This is what I need to do. Let's say my next item here is to make some changes to this container. I just click on the container here and all my settings for the container now show up over here. Now, this has definitely less clicks as I'm building my site. Let's do this one more time. So let's say I need to add an image. I just click here on this plus button. 
drag and drop my image like that. Select my image. So let's say I want to go with this one. Okay. So now that I have an image and also this text, if I need to make any changes to my image, I just click here on this pencil icon. And notice that I'm not moving away from this. Everything is right here on my page. So now I can come over here to style. I can adjust my width like that and so on. If I need to work on the text, I just hover over here, click on the text, and I can start working on the text. If I need to work on the container, I just click on the container, and my settings for the container show up here. Now, let's go back over here. Let's add our image and select. Okay, let's just add a quick image here so we can have the same sort of workflow. Okay, there we go. So, let's do this like how we did with Elementor. So, let's start with the image. If I need to make any changes to the image, I'll click here on this gear icon. Now the image settings come up. I can come over here to design. I can go to sizing. Just like before, I can adjust my sizing over here like that. But if I need to jump onto the text, like I did in Elementor, I can't do that. I have to first of all save and then move on to the next item. So if I need to move my text, I just have to save this, come over to the text, click on the text items, come over here to the design, make my changes, Let's say this needs to be 1EM. I made my changes here. For me to move on to my section, I have to save changes. And then I come over here to my uh, section settings. And then I can go in and start making my changes like that. Of course, in this scenario, you have to decide which way is better. In my opinion, the Elementor way has less clicks to go through versus what you have to do with Divi. But of course, everyone has a preference in terms of how to work uh, with the page builder. Okay, so let's move on to uh, something else here. When it comes to finding your way around and adding more things quickly, you notice again that Elementor has everything right in front of you. This is how they decided to put together their UI. So let's say I want to go into my mobile views. I'll just click over here, boom, and right there and then, I'm in my mobile view. And when I start doing my edits, all I have to do is to click on this little pencil icon. And this automatically knows that I'm in my mobile view. So I can go in, make my changes. And you can see here that tablet is activated by default. I don't need to go in and select it. Okay. And if I need to move on to my phone view or mobile portrait, I can just click on that. And notice what happens. Over here, I am on a mobile portrait. So I can just make all my changes here. And this is how it updates. If I need to make changes over here, I can just come over here, make all my changes. If I need to update my colors, I'll just come over here, change my color. If I need to change my font, I can just come over here, change my font. But notice that I'm not moving away from this. If I need to go back to my desktop, I can just do that. And now I'm back to my desktop. Now, let's take a look and see how we would do the similar thing in Divi if we wanted to make changes to our mobile views. Okay, so over here, what I'll need to do is to click here on the actual uh, module setting like that, go to design, and this is where now I have to go into each and every item. So for example, here, let's say I need to make changes to my text size. i would come over here, click on this little icon like that, and now I have to click on tablets. And this is where I would go in and add my size like that. And if I need to make changes to my phone, I will just click here, click here on the phone and I can just make my change over here like that. But here's the thing. While I'm doing this, I can't just switch over to the image and make those updates. I would have to close out of here and then go into the image settings. So. Let me show you how that works. So I'll have to save, come over here to my image settings, go to design, and then I can go to sizing. And let's say I want to make changes here. I'll have to hover over here, click on this little icon, go to tablet, for example, make my changes here in tablet. If I need to make my changes to the phone, I'll come over here, make changes to the phone, and so on. So this takes a bit longer because you have to close and open each and every module. Whereas with Elementor, you just click on that particular view and everything on that page can be updated in one page without saving and exiting, saving and exiting. So again, you have less clicks 
with uh, Elemental versus Divi. But again, it's a preference thing. But what I noticed is when I work with Divi and I'm trying to make my um, mobile views the precise and the right way, sometimes I forget uh, that I haven't updated a particular thing because I have to go in and update it, go in, update it, close out of it, go in, update it, close out of it. So that's the only uh, difference here. Okay, let's take a look at uh, something else. Okay, so here, let's take a look at how close things are to us as we're designing on our page. So in terms of the UI, over here, we notice that uh, they have a feature here where if I want to see what my page looks like as I'm designing, I can just click on this little icon, boom. And now it's showing me what this would look like on a full screen, as a full screen design, without actually saving the page and then exiting. So let's take a look here and see how DV works. So if I save this and I'm on my desktop view, this is the view that I get, and pretty much it doesn't have any distractions over here to the left. So what you see here is what you get. But over here, I can see why they did that, because this needs to be out of the way for us to see everything. And I really like also the, uh, the UI over here. Okay, next, if we want to make changes to this particular page, we also have this gear icon here. If I click on it, now... I can come over here and let's say, for example, I need to hide the title. I can just do that. Page layout, I'll come over here and choose canvas. If I don't want to have the header and the footer, which means I haven't really gone out of this page in order for me to make those changes. Now, let's see how we would achieve that if we were on Divi. So over here, what I would need to do is to first save this like that. Next. Over here, this is where we have our settings for the page. If I click over here, we have our page settings. So we can uh, add our background color here. If we come over here to design, you know, we can add our text color and so on. Advanced, we have custom CSS and so on. But I cannot disable my header or my footer over here. What I would need to do is to, first of all, save the page. And then I would have to exit the Visual Builder, come over here to Edit Page, and then over here now to the right is where I would choose uh, my page. So let's say in this case, um, I need to uh, choose my template. I'll click here on default template, click on the drop down, and then I'll choose blank page to remove the header and the footer. Click on update. And now I'll have to go back in and say edit with Divi Builder. Hmm, I guess I didn't save my uh, design. But anyway, you get what I mean. You would have to get out of the page, and then go into um, a different page to make that setting, whereas with Elementor, everything is on this particular page. Now, let's say you're working on this page and uh, you want to leave this page and go straight to your dashboard. So what you would need to do is to save. In fact, you know what? Um, let's just add a quick design in here. We'll go in and let's add our text like that. Okay, great. So we can save that. So let's say we need to uh, work on... In fact, before we do that, why don't we also take a look at um, the builder itself? So Divi here has extra features. If I come over here, we also have what is known as a wireframe view. So wireframe view gives you um, a bird's eye view as to what you're working with in your design. So let's say I want to add an image. I'll come over here, search for my image module like that, select it. The only problem is I can't see visually what I'm putting on together here, but that option is there if you want to work with that. So let's say that's my image. I would save that. And if I want to go back and see what I'm working on, I would come over here to desktop view. And now this shows me what the page looks like. So this is uh, an extra thing that uh, Divi has, whereas Elementor, everything is on the desktop. They don't have the wireframe view, which I think is not really necessary here because everything that we need is pretty much right here in, uh, in front of us. And it takes less of uh, uh, options on the actual page builder. So I think, you know, it's not really necessary for Elemento. Whereas for Divi, this is something that perhaps maybe in the future they want to get rid of that because I don't see a lot of people using um, the wireframe view. Okay. So now that we've covered that, let's take a look and see uh, how easy it is to go to our site settings. So over here, uh, if I click on site settings, 
I haven't moved away from my design and this is where I can go and add in all my global colors, my global fonts and so on. Now, let's see how Divi does it. So over here, <coughs> we have to exit out of this page. Okay, that's the thing. We have to exit out of this page. I'm just going to copy this URL because I might need to come back to this. So I will have to exit, go to my dashboard, and then I'm going to come over here to Divi, theme options. So this is uh, similar to the site settings that Elementor has over here so because we have our global colors and so on. So here, this is where you would add your global colors. And there's also other settings that you can do like your Google fonts and so on. But Elementor has it on a, a different page altogether. Okay, But as you've seen, the difference is with Elemento, it is right here in front of us, whereas with uh, Divi, I have to exit and then go to my uh, theme options. Now, let's take a look and see how the layout looks like with the theme builder. So I am going to do a separate video just to show you how the theme builder works in Elemento versus how the theme builder works in Divi. Okay, so over here, if I take a look at the theme builder, we can see that everything is right here on this particular page. Whereas with uh, Elemento, I can come over here, go to my theme builder. And again, I haven't really left uh, my uh, desktop, which is fantastic. So here is your header, your footer, your single post, and so on. So it's pretty cool. But Elemento has an extra item here called the loop item. So I am also going to talk uh, about this in detail because this adds extra functionality and design options because we can use this for blog posts and we can use this also for um, our WooCommerce products. So this is an extra item and this is a little edge that Elementor has over Divi. And over here for Divi, everything is in one place, similar to what we have over here. And if you need to add new, you just click over here to add that particular item. Now where things differ now, I've just clicked on add new. In fact, let me show you how I did that. So Let's go back, theme builder. Okay, so if I need to add something new here, I'll click on this plus button, and I can now decide what exactly I need to add. So let's say it's a header, I'll just click here on this plus button. So let me just leave this and go straight to the, the header so, so I can show you what this looks like. So as soon as I load this, this now has these three options. It has the blocks, so I have pre-made designs which I can just drag in here and insert onto my page and start designing. I also have pages. So these are all my pages that I can use. And I also like the fact that we have the wireframe over here. But what is important here is we also have popular. We also have, you can also favor your items. You also have what is trending and so on. But since this is just a header thing, I can just go in and insert and use that as a starting point. But I'm not going to do that. Whereas over here now with Divi, if I need to add my header, all I need to do is to go to the default website template. So this is where I would add my header. But the difference here is we don't have a starting point for your headers. So let's say I wanted to create a brand new header. I'll delete that. So the UI here is a bit different. I'll click on add global header, build global header. So here I would have to build everything from scratch. So I would start with the column layout, add a single column, for example, and then here I would add my logo. So I don't have a starting point, neither do we have templates that I can use to uh, pretty much jumpstart my design process. So as you can see, both page builders has a different approach as to how you actually use it. But overall, in my opinion, Elementor has less clicks to get to whatever it is that you need to get to, whereas Divi has more clicks. And at the end of the day, it's you who has to decide what you prefer and how easy it is to navigate around it. So it's a preference thing. Let me know what you guys think. What do you prefer, the Elementor way or the Divi way? I also have both affiliate links in the video description below. So whichever one you choose, the link to that is in the video description below. All right, guys. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you again in the next one. Take care.